Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the Frontline Changes Report for the day of 931 for the 11th of September. The past 24 hours is crazy. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of frontline changes because the Russians, as I mentioned, has already restarted its offensive. There is also the Curse Counter Offensive. And of course, Intel dropped from some of the places that should have co collapsed much earlier in the mapping, but no, we only have the information right now. So frontline changes are over in uh, Panasovka, Snagos, Karinevo, Lyubimovka, Kalinel, Kalinov, and then over at the Bischane front at Bischane, at uh, Kalinina in the Bakhmut front, Kalishievka, Andreevka, Torex in the New York front, then Marinivka over at the Pokrov front, Selidove, Lisivka, Lis uh, Ukraine's Nevelsky. We finally have the intel drop about the collapse. Krasnohorivka, Bodjeda, and Vodiani and Voleda. Yeah. So, so these are the whole list. So it's going to be a bit of a long, I guess, mid long video. So we're going to start off with the curse front, with the curse counter offensive. Uh, by the Russians ongoing a lot of frontline changes around here so uh, we go from from the as usual from the western flank uh, the Russian forces have claimed to have taken a Panasovka and and possibly Bekhovo so these are based on Russian claims this is not confirmed yet but the Russian forces are pushing in this area here and uh, it's looking very bad because this is part of the southern pincer against the Snagos salient or, or the Snagos bulge. So the, it is like a battle of the bulge, but there is too many bulge in this Ukraine war. So no, it's not it's, it's not bulgy enough. So and uh so this is a change over Panasovka. And we if we move north upward a bit, so let me move, move this down a bit. So the Russian forces have also uh based on the jo lead, uh, jo location that I've done myself, uh confirm that the Russian forces have actually you know raided down way more than the Ukrainians have claimed in their report so apparently they only started uh here they only posted there but apparently the, the in that video the Russians reached all the way here so and and uh, based on the so based on the confirmed capture uh it looks all the way like this all the way to this point this is the confirmed capture and uh, the Russian claimed the entire of Snagos based on their claim, but uh, I, I, I'm not sure uh, if they actually captured the entire village or not. And in the subsequent video, I also geolocated myself, the Russian forces somehow came back from this forest region. Not sure where they went per se, because they went really far. So uh, the I've mapped it in this way. So this is the Russian ca confirmed capture. The Russians also you know, have expanded their control around here and the, based on the same footage, the Russian uh, the Russian uh, sources claim that uh, this area is also under Russian control. So, which means the Russians have actually expanded massive, massive amount of rounds uh, in this past 24, 48 hours. A uh, very, very huge amount of, uh, amount of capture. And uh, as you can see, this is the Northern Pincer. So the Ukrainian forces, if they are still in this salient, uh, yeah, they are now very, very close to operational encirclement. Uh, the distance between the, the, two Rus the two Russian claims is around 1.6 kilometers. It's still wide enough for them to run away. But uh, if you go all the way to the to the previous claim, uh, previous uh, front line is around 2.7 kilometers. So it is definitely uh redrawable the ukrainians can still escape although the terrain of course is not very very nice because, because they don't have the roads uh, for them to run away but it's still possible so the situation now is desperate super super desperate right now for the uh, for the ukrainian forces in the snagos salient or the uh, western flank of the uh, of the cursed front so it is possible to do it but uh, the ukrainians need to do fast and uh and the the Russian forces is threatening towards uh Lyubimovka with this very very weird uh, uh movement. This movement cannot be explained at this moment because they are right. They the, in the video they are coming back from the forest, so it's really weird. But we shall continue to monitor. Maybe with more information, more geolocation, more videos, we'll be able to tell uh, what the hell is happening. Uh, but 
yeah, this is a massive, massive, massive uh, frontline change over in this uh, curse front. And over in the northern flank, there is a geolocation of Russian forces getting hitting a mine. But this geolocation also confirms that the Russians actually have full control over the roads leading from uh, Sheptokovka all the way to Kalinov, all the way to Kremlinoy. So, which means that the Russian forces actually have control around all these areas invalidating Ukrainian claims. So the Ukrainian claim over in this region has been invalidated. The Russians always claim this area as theirs. And uh, so this is just uh, invalidation of the Ukrainian claims. And uh, based on the Russian mapping, uh, they also claimed uh, this, uh, this part of the forest. Uh, so this forest inside the Russian mapping is under Russian control. Uh, but this is not confirmed uh, by Ukrainian mapping. Uh, no, Ukrainian mapping probably mapped it as gray zone. Previously, there was a geolocation of Astra in this region, which is why it is actually firm Ukrainian control. Uh, but now the Russian mapping seems to overlap again. So we're just going to draw it in and we just, we're just going to see how it goes. So anyway, um, that's all from the northern flank of the Kursk front. We move all the way to Pischane front. At the Pischane front, just south of Kupian's front, uh, there is jo new geolocation uh, in Pischane. So Russian forces geolocated on, on this new tree line getting attacked by Ukrainian forces. Uh, this this attack by, I believe, drone. Yeah, it's a drone with, you no know, the they call it the dragon drone. The the one that, that dropped uh, flames. So, uh, Russian forces basically have uh, expanded their control in the northern, northwestern part of Pischane in the direction of Krushkivka. So, this is very significant. A uh, very, very big amount of changes around here. So, uh, so that's all from the Pischani front. I, I wanted to crack some jokes, but I think no, we have no time for it. So uh, that's all from uh, Pischani front. We move on uh, to Kalinina over at the Bakhmut front. So this is Bakhmut front. Just now we were here, this Pischani, and uh, of course Curse was some, somewhere further up there. So over at the Bakhmut front, uh, there is front line change over at Kalinina. Based on the latest uh, Ukrainian mapping, Russian forces actually have full control of the entire forest along the canal uh, in the northwestern part of uh, Kalinina. So this is just uh, some updated mapping from the Ukrainian side. So this confirms the firm control of Kalinina, at least uh, towards the north. So this is significant in that sense. Over in the southern, fl uh, south southern flank of the Bakhmut front at Klishevka, I, I have fully... Uh, uh, this one is uh, the Ukrainians have claimed in their mapping that uh, they have control over these regions. Previously, uh, there is some uh, Russian servicemen that was geolocated here, but there is no objective, uh, um, how to say, uh, evidence that the U the Russians actually have firm control entirely on this region. We only have the geolocation of the drone strike. So maybe it's just some scouting party that got killed off. So uh, so the Ukrainian continue to claim this back and uh, I decided uh, I decided to map this because they did mention uh, changes in Klishevka. And uh, I, I look at it, it looks like they just removed the gray zone. So they themselves have uh, confirmed that the Russian forces are not there. So uh, there's some change in the, around the Klishevka region and also at Andreevka. Where they confirmed that uh they not they confirmed they map it as they have full control over Andreevka. So anyway, that's it from the Bakhmut front. We move into Thorax. At a uh at the Thorax region, there is a geolocation. Uh, the latest update for Thorax, the Russian forces have ex uh, expanded their control towards the center of Thorax. Uh so this is a very, very slow grind at this moment. So if you zoom in, you'll probably see that uh they have basically taken a, ga a gas station but you know we all know that uh, the russians are running out of gas you no know, yeah you know because everybody to have russian gas so you no know, everybody's running out of russian gas clearly the russians are also ru running out of russian gas so this is why they need the gas station uh going into this area here so yeah moving towards the center so we shall see how this goes uh this is very very deliberate moving just straight for the center so this front line change over at thorax the next front line change we jump all the way to the pokrov front so at the pokrov this pokrov uh and this is the pokrov front at the pok oh it's only here this is the pokrov front so at the pokrov uh at the marinivka region so 
this is very significant. Uh, the Ukrainian forces are geolocated within Marinivka itself. And this invalidates entire chunk of the Russian claims. So uh, previously, the Russians, based on their mapping by Raiba, on the 28th of August have claimed in their mapping, Marinivka has fallen to the Russians. And this, this is also the same mapping, uh, the same day, where the the Russians the Russian the Raibas mapping claimed huge chunk of uh Selido, Sol, Selidevo. and uh, this was the this was the mapping then, and uh, because of this geolocation and because we have already invalidated this part, uh this this southern part of uh, southern eastern part of Selidevo, we have already fully confirmed to clarify this part, and I I did mention that with this clarification now i have doubts about all these things because there is severe lack of evidence that the russian forces are in this area and now we have geolocation of ukrainian forces inside marinevka this entirely invalidated the entire mapping for that day so so sometimes you may hear me say that uh yeah the russian mapping is more accurate but only for specific places at specific on specific days for this day for this mapping for that day it was entirely invalidated the ukrainian forces have firm control uh over marinevka by the look of it and the entire chunk of selidove is still under ukrainian control so i have invalidated the entire claim and uh so now the ukrainians are back in this area here but this does this does not change that we ha previously have the uh, geolocation of Russian forces getting uh, attacked by Ukrainian dragon drones, so which means the Russian capture south, uh, south of this uh, Novo Novokhrodivka will stand. That will still stand, which is why the mapping now looks like this. So this is this is now the new mapping. This is going to look like this, and uh, yeah, it's very disappointing. And however, this is not the first time I've talked and complained about this. Rybas reports are pretty decent pretty good but their mapping sometimes does not correlate with their writing the the guy that do the mapping sometimes just draw captures which did not happen and uh, i for those that follow very 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 closely with dpa you may hear me say this already at least twice or three times over the past two and a half years so this is not something new but the mapping so so when you look at uh, Raiba's uh, reports, I do recommend you guys to be careful about their mapping because don't trust their mapping all the way. The guy that do the mapping, sometimes the re the map don't don't correlate with the report at all. So like this kind of claim, this is obviously you know, yeah, uh, overdid it. So maybe they are trying to you know, like they they're just running ahead of themselves and then they realize that the reality did not catch up. So that is the danger. So which is why, you know, um, and they could also act on bad intel because Raiba do have a lot of sources and sometimes they map bad sources. Uh, that happens quite quite a few times also. So, uh, but that is the danger about you no know, intel collection because certain intels can be wrong. So that is very normal. So, um, but generally Raiba still is very reliable and it's most, one of the most reliable ones if you look at uh so i do highlight i do recommend you guys to track the people that you know give you mappings sometimes um the information can be wrong so no which is why dpa have two mappings so we know right now we know so so uh then we go the next frontline change after selidove is over the Lisiv lisivka ukraine's region so based on ukrainian mapping the russian forces have taken Lisivka. So the Lisivka is now confirmed captured by the Russian forces and uh, they also have expanded their control uh, in the south of Ukraine. So this, this is confirmed by Ukrainian mapping. So this is a Ukrainian concession. So this is confirmed. Uh, but the, the Russian claims, the Russian mapping is more bullish. They say that Ukraine is practically captured by the Russian forces. So uh so this is the Russian mapping. So this is Russian claim. 
the behind one is the confirmed capture. So uh, we will continue to monitor to see whether you know the Russian claim is actually accurate in this sense in this part, uh, because they say that you know Ukraine is practically captured. I mean it is not impossible given how encircled the place is, and I did mention that the Ukrainians must run because they are at the risk of encirclement in Ukraine. So if they run away and the Russians have a quick cap quick capture of Ukraine, that makes perfect sense. So this is not impossible. So that's all for Ukraine. And um and the and Lysivka. The next frontline change, of course, finally we have Intel. Nevelsky collapse. The Nevelsky collapse continues the this time around uh, we have finally some updates. The previous update was uh, on the 7th. So for the past three days, four days, the Russians have advanced greatly in the north of Krasnohorivka and uh, west of Nevelsky, south of uh, Kalivka. So Russian forces expanded their control, fully, fully securing uh, Nevelsky, fully, fully securing Krasnohorivka in the north. And this is a massive, massive development. But more is to come because I mentioned Nevelsky uh, salient is untenable defensively is just undefendable uh, because of the encirclement that threat coming towards Koenig so uh, which is why uh, you no know, operational encirclement threat coming towards Koenig and of, of course Krasnohorivka moving towards Olesentropil so this is why um, this salient is not holdable the Ukrainian grey zone uh, is much advanced uh, so there's a high chance that the grey zone is actually more accurate uh, for the on the on, on the Ukrainian mapping. So just to show you this deep state UA's uh map, of course the zoom is a bit slight is slightly different. Um, <clears throat> I can't really you not know, adjust it in a way. Okay, I can. So, yeah, am I am I am I yeah. So it, so, yeah, it's still a bit different. You no, know? they are using different satellite imagery. So, uh, but you you can kind of see the difference the gray zone that I mentioned. Uh, the Ukrainians still map the gray zone much greater up to the roads to this south of this uh, thingy, which is yeah. So which is actually not that advanced. It's pro it's probably you know here. Yeah, this this is the one. So the so this the gray zone is most likely the more accurate one, uh, because the Ukrainian cells can't be possibly hold these positions. So yeah. So the the Nevelsky collapse is going to be continue because this is a huge expanse of ground. It will take some time for the Russians to take over. And uh, there's a high chance the Ukrainians are no longer here. They have already withdrawn entirely. But even if there's no man, the Russians will still have to take some time because there's always a threat of mines, booby traps, you know, IEDs and whatnot, and drone attacks as well. So um so the Nevelsky collapse continues. Uh, so this is the frontline change over Nevelsky. And um, and of course this also you know secures Krasnohorivka entirely. So the next frontline change we jumps to Bogeda. So uh, at the Bogeda south of Georgivka, and uh, this is the Marinka region, Russian mapping have uh, mapped it that they have a uh, a firm control of the entire tree line south of Georgivka. So that's all a small change around here. And uh, the next frontline change, we go down to Vodiane. So uh, based on Russian mapping, uh, this is a Russian claim. Their mapping is a bit slightly a bit more different, uh, slightly different. They have claimed the entire tree line in the north and also a firmer control over in the south. So basically, this is just some very, very small change uh, for the front line at Vodiane uh, as the Russian forces you know, continue their offensive in this region. And uh, the last frontline change is over at Voleda. So based on the Russian mapping, uh, this is also Russian claim. Uh, they have a claim that they have the full control of the entire coal mine, as well as all the way south, the entire region. So the entire region here in the straightened front line, this is based on Russian claims uh, moving towards Voleda. So this Voleda. So anyway, the, this is the frontline change. Uh, from this region, you can see that uh, the Russian claims is a straight line all the way down. And yeah, so they claim the entire high ground. So interesting. I wonder if this is true. But uh, because, yeah, we can't know for sure. But uh, there's a high chance because uh, although you can see 
you can say that the Russians are unable to you know, take the high ground. Maybe the Ukrainian forces, uh, Ukrainian forces defending the that that this uh slack heap or something or this dirt heap, but the Ukrainian soldier will still need to be resupplied. And if the Ukrainians cannot be resupplied, then I don't think the Ukrainian soldiers will stay there, even if it's a strategically, you know, authentically advantageous position. But if you cannot resupply it, then it's pointless. So, so that's all. And this is all the frontline changes report for the day of 931 for the 11th of September. Massive, massive amount of changes. And I'll see you guys in the next update. Press the like button. Bye-bye.